And uh, TCP stuff, if you want to see that, you could go into that repo, Golang Training, right there. And I'll just open it up. And, uh, and then this is all, you know, originally Caleb code. So this, that's what Caleb does, right? Like, you know, Caleb was like, the ninja black belt master came and seriously whooped a lot of butt. <laughs> and, uh, but he, he put together a lot of these examples about just, you know, how do you set up a TCP server and dial and, and do an echo server, right? And so some of this first stuff would be like, you know, uh, we have a loop here. So we listen on TCP 9000, that gives us a listener. We defer the close of that listener. And then we're eternally going to loop, right? And anything that comes in, we're going to accept that, and we'll have a connection, right? Our own variable names. And then we're just going to write to that connection, hello, and then we'll close that connection, right? And then that will just be running. And so if we TCP'd into that port 9000, we'd be able to see hello world written back. And um, I don't remember the exact command. I can find it here. Do you guys want to see it run or no? You just want to know it's there. Just know it's there. Let's what keep it short. Huh? What again was TCP? What? What again was TCP? Transmission control protocol. So that's a good question. And so when you look at like... Um, so there's various protocols that the internet uses for communication. Yeah. Um, TCP and UDP are the most common at the moment and have been for quite a while actually. Um, UDP is a bit less commonly used for general web stuff. It's it has less error checking and all that, and functions more of a, you make up a package and you send it. And then you have no idea whether it got there or not. So it's like sending a letter in the post office. Mm -hmm. Whereas TCP, you get like a direct connection and it guarantees that your stuff will get there in the same order that you sent it, and that it gets there at all. And so it's more like you call, you call them on your phone. You've got a direct connection to them. So TCP is the direct connection. HTTP is like the walkie-talkie. So HTTP is like uh, your protocol for saying when you first call someone, you say hello, such and such residence. Oh yeah. Or whatever. That would be close to what HTTP is. Uh, you're still you're using TCP, and this is how you're talking. And okay. This is agreed upon format for talking, so that most people understand. So there's over. that. Open systems interconnection model for like networking, where you have the different layers. It's a way of kind of thinking about the different layers of networking. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have like TCP right here, UDP, <clears throat> HTTP up here. People, I think, argue about where the different things go because it's always changing. They come in and edit it. Some of the distinctions are blurry, too. I mean, yeah. So, not important. Anyhow, I just want to point out that resource. And uh, and then the next thing is uh, Golang Web right here, and Google Cloud Storage. So this is our class, GCS, Google Cloud Storage. And so I've shifted these all down a little. So if I broke any links in homework, just update me and I'll update them, or update them yourself. You could edit the document. And uh, and then here's uh, README, which I've added. That's why everything got shifted down. And so here's putting a file. And I really kind of took pains to not only explain how to put a file, but also how to read the documentation, right? And so there's just like the code for putting a file. And then, you know, talking about, okay, hey, we, uh, the first thing that we do is we get a storage new client. And when we have a client, right, pointer to a storage client, we now have this method, these two methods attached to it, you know? And with those two methods attached to it, we could call bucket handle, right? And, uh, you know that or call bucket and that gives us a bucket handle so bucket gave us a bucket handle so I just sort of step through how each of those works and talk about the ACLs and attributes and uh, and using list what list does right and then you know how do you do the git pretty straightforward so basically it's client bucket object right and we lean on readers and writers to kind of get those things back and uh, and then Talk a little bit about interfaces and polymorphism here and, and how if you implement the IO reader or IO writer interface type interface, you know, wherever you have a function or a method that takes a reader or writer, you could pass that in. And so I'm just illustrating that here. You know, this takes a writer and a reader, 
And so since, you know, we implement the writer interface um, up here, IO copy, right? We get back from here a writer. Well, that wants a writer. Now, this isn't a writer just because we called it. We could call that anything we want, right? It's a writer because when we look in the documentation, it has a certain method attached to it. And, uh, and so that allows us to pass in to IO copy. So it talks about the interfaces and the polymorphism and sort of walks through all of that. And so that's uh, put and get and then attributes media link. So it talks about media link, gives you a link to download an object from Google Cloud Storage. And then it also talks about displaying an image. So basically for each of the files here in this, I'm going through and I'm just kind of putting in notes and explaining how each one works. So displaying an image and listing files, right, will give you a list of all of the objects in a bucket. And so then you maybe want to query that, right? So instead of just listing it, you want to query for specific results. So how does the query query work? You know, and so there's the example where we have max results as two. And so that just gives us two results. So list would give us everything, right? And it doesn't give us, like, here are all your objects, right? It gives us an object list, a pointer to an object list. And that object list, when we look at it, Uh, list gives us back a pointer to an object list. And that object list has next, which gives us back a pointer to a query. It has prefixes, and it also has results. Right? And so then those results, that's a slice. Right? So we're just getting a list back. And the list, object list, and list is a struct. We're not getting like a bunch of objects back. Do you see the distinction? We're getting a list. And then in, in there, we have a slice, which has, you know, a slice is basically another list with all of each object with all of its attributes, each of the attributes for all the objects. But you don't actually get here all the pictures. Like, that wouldn't make sense, right? Like, list, you know, I mean, it's called list. It's not like get all of the pictures. <laughs> you know, if you had a thousand pictures, you don't want all the pictures. You just want, like, their name. You know, and the things where you could then like run something else to pull out each the pictures you want. All right, so that's a. Uh, I don't know where my notes went. Oh, right there. That's uh that's the storage query max results, and then you know it talks a little bit here about the query the query struct right, and so you know making a distinction between uh, the pointer to a query, which we get back, and uh, and when we got back the object list, right? We have the object list, so we call list. We get back an object list. So call list, get back an object list, pointer to an object list, and with a pointer to an object list, we have these things, right? Well, that's different than the query. So the query has this stuff, the delimiter, the prefix, versions, cursor, max results. So, you know, interesting, prefixes and a prefix for the query. Results here in object list. So anyhow, that, uh, that's uh, max results. And then, ah, that's as far as I got in putting together the notes. Mm -hmm. But I did finish out some of the stuff which we didn't have before. So seeing next, right? And so this is what I'll finish out in the notes. And the notes explain it in much greater detail and depth than I just explained it here. So make sure you check them out. And so uh, again, we're just getting max results here. And then we're going to go over the query. We saw this one the other day. But then we could run next, right? And it gives us the next two results and the next two results. So I cleaned this one up a little bit. So when it runs, I think it is a little bit more clear what it's doing. So let me just show you it running. And it takes a minute because it's going to create all those files up in Google Cloud. So it takes a couple of seconds to run.
anybody know any jokes? So, uh, you know, so here's the list bucket results. And my query said just give me two, max results two. But then I said next and next and next and next. And so every time it looped through, grabbing two more results until we're done. On the last one, it just grabbed me one, you know? So uh, you can see that max results is two, and that gives me query. Query gives me a, you know, right here. You're creating right? a variable type query. Query, right? Yeah, creating a variable type query. And then uh, I call list, and I pass in that query for list right here. And list gives me back an object list, right? And then with my objects right here, I could call results, which is that slice of attributes. And, uh, right, object add adders. And so then for each object, right, range over that. So for each one in that slice, I'm going to print out the name. And uh, I print here just looping through. So I could see each time I'm looping through, looping through, looping through, looping through. And so that gives me my two results the first time. I get my query with just two results. I run it, give me two results. And then I say, uh, oh, you know what? Now my query is equal to obj, obj next. Well, from obj, obj, I don't know how you say that. Objects. OBJs, from OBJs. Objects. Right? OBJs, I have next. Next is the continuation query to retrieve more results with the same filtering criteria. If there are no more results to retrieve, it is nil. No. And so that's what that check was right here yeah is that query nil okay we're done <clears throat> how many people that helped clarify your understanding of next and queries nobody seriously nobody that didn't help anybody how many people already understood that all right cool well that's not good i didn't provide any value on that one you guys have all this because there's a few people barking about it because I, I gave you an assignment and I was like last week and I never put it up and somebody's like you know hey you never put that up you gonna put it up and I was like well I've kind of been debating it and heard a little bit of grumbling about Google Cloud Storage I go do you want it up and they're like if you put it up I don't understand it I'm just gonna copy your code and call it good I was like well that's not good so hopefully it's helping somebody so that was, that was a uh, max results next. I think prefix two was a little bit confusing last week. We didn't quite nail, or what, Monday. We didn't quite nail that, so let's take a look at that. So the next man just says, um, do this again, but this time don't include the whatever files you just retrieved. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you've got a max results of two, and you've got seven items. The first time will be two results, and, and the next will be a query structured in such a way that it won't get those two items. So you'll get the next two items, you, and its next will be it won't have the four items you already seen. So you get the next items after that. So, uh, so if you so if you keep querying using next, it'll eventually go through all of them. But you're getting them back piecemeal, which may be useful if you're like trying to show a search page or something. Yeah, yeah, that, that, I was thinking about that because um, if you take uh, the next and combine it with uh, both the max results and uh, the delimiter, uh, delimiter uh, I think what you're going to get back is pretty much the search page after looking for something on Google or Yahoo. Or Or at least for a folder, considering cloud storage is for folders. And you know, when we call list, we pass in the query, and then we get back objects, right? We get back the object list. And so with that object list, right, that's where next next is stored, which is a pointer to a query. And so that that object's right there. Right. If we then say, okay, give me the next, which is the pointer to query and assign it to query, it's remembering from our first one. We called list, 
here, here's your ob objects, right, which is your object list. And part of that object list is another pointer to a query. So if you want to run it again from that first call, give me the query that it remembered, the object list remembered. And so it remembers that previous query. And so if you run it again, it sees, okay, that previous one had max results. Now you want more, you know. And that's next is a continuation query to retrieve more results from the filtering criteria. Yeah, so, so that's how it's all connected. Yeah, so depending on how you set it up, you can um, do a query search for a specific folder or types of folders. And then you could keep on. You could, you could make it so it doesn't return like a million results all at once and set only for returns 30, which yeah. is good for populating a web page. Yeah. And they can go to the next page if they want. Yeah, totally yeah. cool. Yeah, so, or uh, if you don't know the exact name of the folder, and if you search for it in this manner, then uh, if you limit the number of ones that you can see, then you can kind of go from your best guess all the way down to the ones that don't even match whatever it is you're looking for. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. With some creativity for the prefix uh, thing, I think the query for this thing is not doesn't have that many options. But if you were to put together something that could fuzzily find its way down like that, yeah, it would be a lot of work on your end, though. All right. So sorry, the prefix was straightforward. So just give me stuff with foo was what this last one ran, and uh, and out of all these files, right? We only got things prefixed with foo. We got foo1 and foo2. So the prefix deal was pretty straightforward. It's the uh, delimiter which wasn't. So let's look at that. Query delimiter, 12. Bam, bam. Uh, while that's spinning up, we'll look at the code. Create files, list files, write string, results from lister, with delimiter, lister. So lister, we have storage, query, delimiter. So it looks like we'll have all the file, we'll create a bunch of files, we'll list all the files, and then we're going to print this out, and beneath this we'll see the results with the delimiter. And so we're saying, okay, the delimiter is a forward slash, and that's our query, and then we pass that into, <clears throat> and here, that's the pointer to the bucket handle or whatever it is and then we call list off of that we get our objects back range over the object results right for each one print out the name and uh, and then and then here we have prefixes found and, uh, and these are the objects prefixes right so the other prefixes which are found so when we look at the objects results we have prefixes right here. Represents prefixes of objects matching but not listed up to and including the requested delimiter. And so <clears throat> here are all the different file names in my Google Cloud storage. I created a bunch of them. Uh, results from lister with delimiter, right? So the delimiter I passed in was just root, just a forward slash. And so it gave me the files, right, that were like forward slash in the forward slash root. Right, so it gave me foo one, foo two, it gave me bar, and it gave me this one. And then the other prefixes that were found in this direct, when we ran over all of this, when we ran over this bucket, the other prefixes were found were bar, boo, and compadre. So bar, right? These are other prefixes that were found. Boo and compadre. So that's what prefixes here is like. So we do an object list. So we do list right here, pass in our query, and when we, when we run that, it returns a pointer to an object list. That object list has results with all the attributes of every object, right? A slice. As next query, which will be like, okay, next, 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 give me more results, give me more results, more results, remembering the queries that was passed in from before, because when we pass in a query to list, when we pass in a query to list, it gives us 
uh, takes query, gives us the object list, and then the object list remembers the previous query that was passed in and, and says, you want the next set of stuff? I'm remembering that. Here's your query for it. Run this query now. Right? And then we have prefixes. So if we had some delimiter, right, it like gave us all the, the files which matched whatever delimiter we asked for, and, and it gave us all the prefixes it found at that level. Right? So if we were then to run for compadre, right, it would give us this as a prefix and this as a prefix. You want to try it? <coughs> compadre forward slash, see what happens. I think we'll get no results. How many people want to bet with me on this? We're going to get no results and we will get two prefixes found, which are Amigo and Luego. Right? Because I'm going to say, hey, give me all the files at that prefix. That delimiter, sorry. Compadre. It is the no, the delimiter you want to keep as slash. You want the prefix compadre so the forward slash. Like that? No. You have delimiter as it was before. Ah, just, just a slash. There we go. And then nice. prefix. This will be compadre. Hey, recompiled. Perfect. So no files and Amigo and Luego as prefixes found. Compadre Amigo, Compadre Luego, and no files. Cool. Anybody else want to try? There are no files in that particular level. So the level is Compadre. All we find at Compadre are more folders. <clears throat> But it also didn't grab that. That's interesting to contemplate. Right? Why this, these two, when I asked for the prefix compadre and not this one? Compadre's there. It's prefixing some files. Why didn't it grab uh, it? Is it because um, there's not a slash uh, after the one? No, wait, that. Is that what it Is it due to. Um, the level that the prefix is on, I was going to say. Yeah, the prefix is looking for the entire full path. So it's looking at, okay, it says compadre starts the C. What starts the C? It says that starts the B. That's, so ignore the entire file or that entire thing. So that's Let's see if there's anything here where they're combined. Oh, uh, this is 13. <clears throat> so now we have a lister which takes prefix and delimiter. And so uh, <clears throat> passing in the prefix of bar and one of them has a delimiter forward slash, and the other one does not. Uh, so results with delimiter, without. And then also printing out down here the prefixes. So we get bar. So without the delimiter, and what, it's just hard for me to explain this. We saw this file a little bit, but I added that in. It made sense to me when I put it together. So without the delimiter, if you go back and look there, add it. Um, it's returning bar, and then its prefix is bar forward slash. There you go. And then if you call, if you query again with bar forward slash as your prefix, you get back bar slash one and bar slash two with a bar slash 
nonce, I think that says, slash, as your prefix, and as, as your only prefix in prefixes. And if you query again with that, you get back bar nonce one, bar nonce two, and get back bar nonce compadre, compadre as your uh, prefix. Am I am getting your eyes? No, it's cool. I was getting out of your way. So, and then you call it again with that, you get compadre one, compadre two, and yeah. nothing in your prefixes. Yeah, so the prefix on this one, <clears throat> the prefix on this one was bar. And then we added in the delimiter. So we got all these files, prefix bar. And the delimiter is forward slash, all right? And uh, so the first time through, it just gave me bar. And then this was the prefixes that were left. And then the next time, those and those, right? It takes a little bit to wrap one's head around that. As you may notice, we're using forward slash here because that's pretty common on its Mac and Unix file systems and close to Windows file systems. They all use slashes in some way. So we use them there, but you're not required to. Delimiter is the thing you set. You could say that your five, your different folder levels are separated by percent signs that you want. It doesn't care. All you have to do is change what you got for your delimiter there. So what, what was listed here, right, bar one, that's my object's prefix. What was listed there becomes my prefix, and I call list dir again, I pass that in, right, this is the function that's defined. I pass that in as the prefix, so now it will give me anything with bar, bar forward slash, so I get those two, bar forward slash, and the delimiter on that is still just the forward slash, that's the delimiter on it. So it gives me bar one, bar two, and uh, it recognizes, okay, nonce is the next prefix. So when I pass that in as the prefix, it gives me the files with that prefix, all right? So passing that back in as the prefix, and then bar nonce compadre for the next one. Okay, so uh, I'll finish that readme file, kind of explaining all those <laughs> documents. Um, and uh, stop.